Good evening, Sarah, and welcome to another day of the video diary. And it's late, so the whole day's gone technically. And I'm just running to the library to go and test my code because I'm halfway there. Halfway. Oh, blimey, I am tired. 2.5 hours. I got sleep last night. Uh, woke up at 7 o'clock. It's now half past one in the morning. I'll let you do the maths. I'm a bit tired, lol. But saying that, I don't feel like I, I'm a really strange level of tired. Where I'm not actually tired. I don't think I'm tired. Um, but every now and again I go into waves of like, whoa. I cannot think straight kind of waves. So yes. What the hell has gone on today? Basically, I got myself up at 7 o'clock in the morning, as I said. Sorted out the uploads for today. Yes, did. I sorted out the uploads. And I then went to lecture today. Today is the very first day that we've had on Java, which is the second programming language that we've learnt. Uh, we've learnt Python, and now we're moving to Java. And Java, I'm not going to be honest, scares me. I've never been scared by, an op by a programming language before, but the whole idea of it's just terrifying. It's completely different to procedural languages, which I know of so far, where the computer does things in a set order and it makes sense. I don't know what it is about Java. I don't know whether it's because I'm make I'm like scared of it, so it's making it seem harder, but I genuinely just look at it with a blank face, just not knowing. So hopefully that clears up. But I'm not particularly paying attention to it at this precise moment in time because I'm still programming Python. That bloody programming. I have spent the vast majority of today, while I should probably be programming lectures, not programming lectures, writing up lecture notes on Java and stuff like that, still doing my coursework, um, which is the reverse Polish calculator, because it's silly and it's really, really annoying. I have it working. I had it working this morning to varying levels of perfection. Essentially, I had it running. I had it doing every single thing that I found. And oh my god, there's a badger. Hey, Mr. Badger. Hey. Hey. Hey, Mr. Badger. Hey. Hello. Look at you, Mr. Badger. You're pretty. Hello. Don't be scared, Mr. Badger. Don't be scared. No, Mr. Badger. Oh my god, he's so cute. I want one. I want a badger. You can't see him though. Oh my god, I just want him. Oh, he's like so fat and like blobby. Oh, he's yeah, cute. He's probably really with like fleas and numerous diseases, but oh, he's so cute. Right, okay, so I'm not sure how well I've explained this over the past couple of days, but this is essentially what it is. There is a system um, that the university have programmed, and I have to mimic said system in my coursework. I have to just look at it, I have to use it for a little bit, then try and reverse engineer it and just program another one um, without being able to look at any form of source code or anything. Basically just by looking at inputs and whatever it, uh, its outputs are. So it's basically just a black box. You send it some stuff, it sends you some stuff back, you try and replicate that with code, try and find patterns and the like. Um, I would nailed it this morning. It's a reverse Polish calculator at its heart. I nailed it this morning to be able to do all of the main things that it does. Um, perfectly fine, brilliantly, and uh, error stuff out, it was great. Um, but, 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 this isn't as simple as just writing and stupid little reverse Polish calculator, because reverse Polish calculators are easy. So, it's got little bugs in it, and if you don't have those bugs, then you're wrong. So if I'm dividing it, blah, 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 if we're doing like this divided by this, then it comes out as negative. If I do a negative divided by a positive, then the answer is negative. However, if I do a positive divided by negative, then the answer according to that is positive, and henceforth, my answer must also be positive. Why? It literally is just a massive, massive pain in the face hole. It's doing my face in, right? So I've been spending like the majority of the day either doing this or playing cards with people who do this while we talk about it and stuff. And um, the problems that I have currently, no I've had currently, where's my list? Me simply displaying the answers on the screen, similar to how that does, isn't good enough. I have to use some dodgy backline code just to say, oh, send to standard default. And that's just to make it, they don't mark this, they don't go through and read it. They go through with a computer and the computer goes, blah, 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 blah. this got X, one, X, Y, Z, number of tests correct, this is its mark. It's simple as that, right? Um, 
So if you just print the answer to the screen, that's wrong, it's incompatible. The other one won't be able to figure it out. So we have to, the testing scheme won't be able to figure it out. So you have to program a way for it to go to the testing scheme, which is a pain in the face hole. Um, also you have to program how to close it, which was easy really. Uh, you have to put it in an iteration loop. Um, and now I'm on the problems I'm on now. Basically I got it to that level. I got it perfectly fine ready to start testing it. I put it into the testing program, ran it through that, zero. Zero marks, zero errors, no, as in like full errors, everything's error in like mad, what the hell's going on, right? So time passes and I start talking to some people and they're saying a couple of things. You know the random function that we well, don't know it, but there is a random function on the program uh, that you have to basically mimic. So whenever you type in an R, it generates a random number between zero and a maximum number and then is happy with it. But, right, here's, 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 this is the clincher, this is bloody hilarious, this. Um, if you type in R, if you just generate your computer, your my program, to randomly generate a number, whenever the computer does its tests to mark my grades, because my system came up with a different R to your R, I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to get zero marks out of it. So basically, I don't have to randomly generate. I don't have to tell the computer how to generate a random number. I have to decode, decrypt their random their random file, find a seed that they've used, and then generate the random numbers from there. The f no one was warned about that at all. One person found out by running through the tests and things. They've got the tests working. My god, man. Secondly, what else? What else? What else? If you, um, if you type in a number and you type in a zero, one, two, let's say you type in zero, one, two, three as a number input, um, you'd expect it to just go one, two, three, and it'll enter in 123 as a number, right? Nice and simple. However, no, it's not, don't be silly, it's not as simple as that, is it? Because what it does, for no random, for no apparent reason whatsoever, without any warning, it converts that number into a, uh, into base 8, which would convert it to something like 83, I think, don't quote me though. Again, not warned at all. So I've been sat here, programming, stressed off my face, I've got a sore throat, my back hurts from this retarded chair, and I just, oh, it's just driving me insane this programming task. And the most annoying thing is, I know that it works. I know that it's generating me the right answers, but it's not compatible with their damn testing script. Or they've got their stupid, bloody, mod 8, why? So I've been stressed, and it probably hasn't been helped by my lack of sleep. Um, but I went to the library. I went to go and help Andy um, do his mastermind, and also to test my code. And my code wouldn't run on their computer's mastermind errors like a boop on their computers, which isn't good since that's the computers it's going to be marked on. So what it's going to do is I've got to go and cry to the tutorial. I usually don't go to the programming tutorial because I just program here. There's no point in me going. Um, Atlas is a lot better to program than the university computers. One, she's a hell of a lot faster. Two, she's got two monitors. Twice as good instantly. So I've never, I only ever go whenever I've got like a specific question. I've got to go there and I'm like, look, why the hell does this... Why does it error all the time? I've checked like end of line, I checked x, y, z. If I run python.thingy, I can, I can run it. python.mastermind.py runs fine, it runs like a dream. However, if I make it an executable, nah, nah, get out of town, you're living in a dream world, Jamie, that's not allowed. So I've got to go and ask them what the hell's going on about it because it's scary and stuff and I want that to score well and it's a good job I spotted the fact that it errors but otherwise I've been trying to get the testing script to work with my file and I've only just nailed it I've nailed it at the thingy there's a couple of bugs it's found but beyond that I've now found the testing script and I can do it tomorrow I can fix all of the bugs that the testing script highlights to me um, hopefully anyway uh, which is a right pain in the face because I can only run the testing script on the university computers which means that I have to run it through a virtual machine, a virtual, no it's not a virtual machine, it's a virtual remote desktop which is running Linux, no it's not actually, it's running Windows which is running Linux uh, so I've got, win <laughs> I've got Windows running a virtual machine which is running a Windows machine which is running Linux um, 
and only Atlas can talk to the hard drive that the other one can talk to. Um, that's a lie. But yeah, that's I can only transfer files to it with Atlas. Um, it's basically a pain in the face hole, to be honest with you. So yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I've been doing today. I haven't really done anything else, to be honest with you. Sorry, lol. So the plan of attack for the next couple of days, well, for tomorrow, because this is going to be done by tomorrow. I'm going to bed now. I'm going to bed early. Well, hey, I I had so little sleep last night because I thought, I know, I'll get the program done. And then when I didn't get the program done, I thought, right, I'll go to bed now because by the time this time tomorrow, I'll be able to have got it done. It'll all be tested. It'll all been fine. There wouldn't have been stupid bugs in it or about this stupid random thing. Um, and then I'll be able to have a nice lie on Saturday, and I'd have had a nice free Friday slash weekend, and it'd have been brilliant. No, <laughs> don't be silly. So it now turns out that I've actually got to get up earlier than I normally do on a Friday to go to this tutorial to go and ask them nice questions. But hopefully they'll be able to help me, so I'm not going to complain too much. I've also got some decision maths to do, lecture notes to write up, which is the Java stuff, and then I've got other programming shizzle whizzle written down too. Um, so yeah, that's my life at the moment. It's a bit programmy and a bit stressful, a little bit. Um, and it's all because I've never been this close to a deadline before. I've always been like easily clear. Okay, okay, with chess it got a bit close at times, but I've never been like this this close, like with so few marks. If that makes sense. Because when I'm running this testing script, and it's coming out with zero. That's not a good feeling. <laughs> Whereas with chess, I obviously always knew that I was had like X amount of points in the bag all the time. Um, so it's very stressful. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? It's a bit like risque. But it's because I thought that I had an extra 10 days. I don't have an extra 10 days. I've now got four days. But hopefully by tomorrow, it'll all be done. It'll all be tested. And it'll all be running and compiled tomorrow. Priority number one. And then I'm going to do try and get some decision maths and lecture notes written up. And maybe play a bit of Black Mesa to bloody celebrate the bloody end of it, you know what I mean? So yeah. Shoot a life, yofo! And everyone's the same as well, like, everyone's on Facebook like sharing different things that we found that the programming's doing the stupid bloody things. Um, and the libraries are immensely packed, lots of coursework hand-ins are coming up over the next couple of days. Um, the libraries are packed. I'm... What? The Lovelace and stuff like that. Packed. It's incredible. So, yeah. It's nearly two o'clock. Uh, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to get myself about six hours sleep tonight. Probably not. Probably about five and a half. It's because now I know I've got things. Now the testing things works. I know where my pro program's wrong. So I kind of just want to program it now to get it out of the way. But I need, need a nice, full, energised brain for tomorrow, Mr. Jamie. So, go to bed. Okay. Catch you later.